Listen, getting successful, whatever you consider successful, if it's rich, whatever, it's not a magic trick. It's not God picks certain people he'll make rich and certain people he don't. He gives all of us as his children the power of choice. You have a say-so in that. You can decide to be rich. And with God's help, it's highly doable. But you first have to think it. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is here. I'm no better than none of y'all. I'm not a better person than you. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. None of that. If you want to be successful, you have to change this. This has to change. Listen to me. It's not what makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. See, if, but you got to change, though. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's gonna get a job, and somebody born in a hospital that's gonna give them a job. You get to decide which one you gonna be. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm gonna be rich, poor, mediocre, plentiful, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. Your mind, all right, here we go. This is the teaching moment. Let me give you this so you can get on with your 2019. You walk in the house, you pick up the remote control. Let me teach you how this works. And you press the power button. When I told you 2019 will be the best year of your life, but you have to claim it. You have to expect it to be the best year of your life. You have to live your life with the expectation that great things are coming your way. And that's how it works. Now, let me teach it to you. You grab your remote. You press the power button. What do you expect to happen? You expect the TV to come on. Guess what? It come on. If you want to see Sports Center, Sports Center Channel 46, and you press 46 and OK or select, what do you expect to come on your TV? Sports Center. And guess what show up? Sports Center. They got the concept of creating a remote from the Bible. See, God is tied to all of this. You better understand what I'm trying to tell you now. The Bible says, a man is as he thinketh. God created us in his image. God thought of this world. He thought of it, so he created it. So he made you just like him, that your thoughts can create things. He made you just like him. Now you can't go make earth and heaven like he did but you can make a better world for yourself. There is a scripture, Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, tarry means take a long time, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. That's in the Bible. That ain't in the rich people's copy. <laughs> That's in everybody, everybody's Bible. 
The problem is everybody don't do it. But it's right there. But you got to do it. I'm just telling you, it's, if you don't do it, it's, it's, it's too hard. It's almost impossible. That vision board has changed my life. Everything I put on my vision board, I get. Everything. Now, you have to understand something. It's not going to come when you want it to come. It comes at an appointed time. That's the trick. But the appointed time is what throw people off. Because most of see, when you ask God for something, he sends it. He ships it immediately. As soon as you ask him something, you really believe he'll do it? He boxes it up and he ships it to you immediately. The problem with the package is he never gives you the date that the package is going to arrive. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Because if he told you the date that the package would, rely, would arrive, it would destroy the requirement he has of all of us, which is faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. So if you ask God for a million dollars and he tell you I'm going to give it to you in March of 2020, you wouldn't need no faith. You'd be talking to people crazy because you know in 2020, <laughs> I'm going to be a millionaire. But he sent a million as soon as you asked for it. But it's going to come at an appointed time. The problem is people stop waiting on the package. Then when it get to you, because he delivers only to Faith Street. When he delivers to you on Faith Street, but you done stepped off of Faith Street, you over here on I Don't See How Circle. He don't ship that. Instead of staying on Faith Street, you done stepped over here to I Don't Believe It Boulevard or It Took Too Long Avenue. Then the package come to Faith Street it's just like the post office in FedEx. If you ain't there to receive it, it gotta go back. That's how it work, man. You have control of this. This belongs to you. This is yours. You're the captain. You're the master. You're the foreman. You're the general. You're the head. Don't give control of this to nobody, especially the devil. Do not let Satan come in here and function and operate because he has one mission, to keep you off course, to make you not think it's possible, to make you think that God don't hear you. His job is only to destroy you, to make sure that you don't become what God intended for you to become. That's the mission of the devil. Now, if you don't believe in the devil, I, this conversation ain't for you. If you don't believe in God, this conversation ain't for you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people who are spiritually based. If you get control of this, that's why I'm telling you these two books. I'm, look, the, the, the best book you can read is the Bible. If you read the book of Proverbs over and over and over, it's the book of wisdom and understanding. It would really help your life, man. If you just read I'm going to be honest with you. That's the only book in the Bible I've read cover to cover. I've only read the book of Proverbs. I've read some scriptures every now and then. I only know five or six scriptures by heart. I'm just going to be real with you. But I've memorized them five or six scriptures, and them five or six got me here today. I know a lot of people that know the Bible inside out ain't got nothing to show for it. You know why? Because they memorized it, but they didn't apply it. I have applied six scriptures to change my life. But these books that I told you about, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz, you know what it does? It just teaches you how this works. Once you get this, y'all, you can change everything. Do you understand negativity? Let me just give you this and I'm gonna walk away. Negativity, you can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coat your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm going to show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, 
Man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm tripping, I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop, just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call someplace home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. God is good, man. You ought to give him a chance to work in your life. Thank you all for coming.